Hey everyone, welcome to episode number 63. I'm going to call it 63 and a half because we tried to do 63 and 63 didn't happen. So, <laughs> I tried, we tried to do it two weeks ago, right, Tanya? And my computer yeah. just froze the minute I was like, welcome to, and it's like, eh, I'm no, dead. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't do it. It overheated. It's, a, it's an older laptop I've had for a while. So, so here we are, episode 63. And a half, you know. <laughs> and, uh, we got Yvonne here today and Miss Tanya. April will be back next week. Um, and then I don't know when Holly's coming back. Or uh, Robin actually got in touch with me earlier this week and said she wants to come back so bad, but she's trying to uh, get the kids arranged in school. So we'll see how it goes. Oh. Mama duty, mama duty. Oh, yes. Yeah. So how's everything going with everybody? I feel like it's been forever. It has been forever. Going good. The kids are back in school as of yesterday. <laughs> Tanya and, uh, said, my kids are at school. I said, are you in your underwear eating candies <laughs> on the couch? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, Maria went back last week, last Wednesday. And uh, it's a new school and new environment. But she made, it, she made a couple friends. So she's really happy about that because she was really worried. She would come in, like, when we talked about moving, she would come in, and she'd, like, start crying. And she's like, Aww. I just don't know if the kids are going to be nice to me and blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, she made one friend on Thursday and one friend on Friday. And so she's going to – you got to so have sweet. at least one, you know. you got to have oh, that yes. one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Yvonne? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it seems like it's been forever since we've gotten together. Um, it's been a lifetime. Yes, it it's a lifetime in YouTube world. That's for sure. You're gone if you're gone for a month. It's like it's like five years past. No, I'm glad everybody remembered us and they're coming in to chat with us. <laughs> right. Well, that's why I, I put it on the schedule like last night. I was like, let me just go ahead and schedule it so they know we're coming for real this time. I know. I was so excited when I saw you doing a haul video yesterday. I'm like, yes, Deb got her camera. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got the new camera last week. I got a new microphone and got everything set up, so it's go time. So. I love the color you painted in your office. Did you paint it or it was already there? No, I painted it. This is the color of one of the walls in Maria's room. So we had leftover paint. And so I painted in here because it was this ugly, the paint's probably 30 years old, you know, like, paint and yeah. so I just couldn't do it so I painted it I didn't, I didn't paint this wall because it was supposed to be shelves but it wasn't going to be right with all the shelves so I didn't paint it but I did put up some like draperies to make it look nicer because I really wanted a nice office yeah it's pretty I like it Dwayne kept calling it my cubby hole <laughs> I'm like I'm like, it's six feet by 12 feet. It's a decent size. It's not a cubby hole, you know. Right. Is your air conditioner on right now? Yeah. See, I can't even hear it. You can't hear it? Okay. I think when I did Dwayne's show, I had the webcam microphone on. Oh. And so it's much closer to the air conditioner. So. But has anybody been doing anything exciting? Fantastic, wonderful. It's the end of the summertime. Anything, Yvonne? Well, you know, um, I didn't get to do a vacation this year, but um, we might go up and do a poker tournament here next month. So that I've got that to look forward to. But as far as reselling, um, I made quite a few changes based on what some of our reseller friends were telling us, you know, reporting back from eBay open 2017. So um, I think the most exciting thing for me this summer was my, you can't see it, but my new mannequin and what I did to her. Watch. <laughs> oh my God. I made a, my mannequin, my cheap mannequin magnetic. That is so genius. I know. And I put her on a turntable. So I, uh, what a money saver. So I actually did a little video about that for anyone and I'll help anyone who wants to know because that's a huge time saver. So that's probably, that's pretty epic for me. That was fun this summer. I, 
I did that. I do a turntable for a long time. I attempted to do a turntable. Gosh, it's got to be four or five years ago. There, a display had come down in a store, and it was like one of those rotating, like on ball bearings. And I was like, oh, I can paint it white, and then I'll put my stuff on top, and then I can do like a around. Uh, it looked like garbage. It did not turn wow. out at it's all. Funny. Yeah. But it's putting your costume. mannequin on a turntable is awesome. Super smart. Yeah, especially the ball bearing. Nice and smooth, you know? Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. That saves a lot of time with those magnets, because I know people with mannequins, a lot of times they get the just the body, because the arms are kind of a pain. Yeah, they but, are. But it does look so much better. Yeah, it does look better. I'm really liking it. But yeah, immediately I'm like, okay, this I'm not going to like this, this arm on, arm off. And so that the next very next day, I'm like, uh-uh, this is getting fixed. I will figure this out. Yvonne's like, I will find a solution. <laughs> That's what's, you know, well, we're entrepreneurs, so we have kind of have that in our blood anyways, right? Yeah. Yep. Silver hair staggers making fun of me. She says, don't you have to watch for the brooms falling in that closet? <laughs> it's not a closet. It's an office, I promise. You know, this is bigger than a lot of spaces that people have when they work in, like, corporate world. That's, yeah, that's true. true. Because, yeah. like, normally when you have a cubicle, it ends right about here. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, no, I'm really happy with it. It does its purpose, which is what I wanted was I wanted a space, but I didn't want too much space. And I had gotten to thinking about that room. And I was like, you know, I'm going to have all that space in there. And it's just going to turn into what my other office was, which was a storage with a computer in it. You know? Mm -hmm. And I don't want a storage with a computer in it. So this stuff goes in and out. This stuff changes every day. There's something different on these little things kind of every day. So it doesn't get become storage. Tanya, you had fun. You went to San Antonio over the last Yeah, week. last week we took a um, couple days and we went to San Antonio with the kids. We did the caverns, the Natural Bridge Caverns, and we did the uh, zoo, not the zoo, but uh, the drive through park where the animals walk up to the car and you give them food. I know all about it. Yeah, and then we went to the river walk, uh, and we did that little boat that goes on the river walk, like the tour. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. And I did get some thrifting in. I went to a, a few Goodwills in San Antonio, and I, I've taken some video of it. I'm hoping to put together a video Sometime How are this week. Goodwills in San Antonio? I've never ventured over that way to. I've been to San Antonio right. twice, like ever. And so. I was really disappointed in the jewelry. There really wasn't. There definitely wasn't any jars, and what jewelry they did have was just like cheap plastic stuff. So um, maybe I was in there at the wrong time of the day. But um, just from the ones that I did go to, I wasn't a whole lot impressed with the jewelry. But I went to one of them was really, really nice. They had a bunch of stuff. And um, like I said, I took some video. I'll be showing you guys. <laughs> you know how we went to that Savers and they had all those jewelry jars? Yes. Okay, well, apparently they don't have those all the time. Because yeah. I went over there and I guess there's a jewelry person in charge of the jewelry jars. Right. And she like fills them up and puts out all the jewelry. So it's not like other people, I guess they don't trust other people to do the sorting of the jewelry. Mm -hmm. So when I went on Dwayne's show, the auction show, I went by Savers to try to get jewelry jars. I wanted to get like five, <laughs> but I only ended up with two. And it was because I waited like an hour plus probably another hour because we were already there. So it was like two hours for me to get two jars. Yeah, that's crazy. I was like, fill the jars. So do you feel like she was holding it for somebody? The third one? I think so, because it was already taped over. It had the price tag on it, and she wouldn't put it on the counter. Yeah. That's my she, guess. It had the goodies in it. Yeah, she was like, I was like, oh, are you going to have any more jewelry jars? Because there was like one, and it was like only half full, and it was tiny. Um... It had a bracelet that was like in the way, so everything was just on top of the bracelet and what under you know it was like half empty. And uh, I was like, Are you gonna have any more jewelry jars? And she's like, Um, yeah, in a little bit. And I was like, Well, what about that one down there? Um, you know, are you gonna put that one out? And she's like, Oh, well, I'm not finished with it yet. 
it even was though it was taped. Taped over and it had the price tag on the top. <laughs> yeah, she must have put some gold in there or something and was waiting and for her friend to come was, pick it up. <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't let me have it. So then I was like, okay. And then I was like, all right, well, we're just saying get in jars. But I was walking around like buying stuff. Oh, I should have got this stuff out of my car. I wanted to show that Lisa Frank folder I bought. Anyway, I bought, um, so we walked around. We were there for probably an hour. By the time I got back, she had actually was just putting a jar on the counter. So I got that one and I was like, are you going to have any more? And she's like, yeah, I'm filling them up right now. 50 minutes later, <laughs> five zero. Yeah, she crazy. was just going to do another jar. And I was like, okay, so I got those two. And then I was like, Hey, um, I'll just, can I just take the one that you're not finished with yet? You know? And she's like, uh, this other lady piped up and she's like, no, that's against the rules. We can't just hand them to people. And I'm like, well, could you put it on the counter and I could take it and go? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, but, yeah, she was saving it. Yeah. Yvonne, did you do any good shopping? Have you been doing any good shopping, shopping? Um, Just only recently. You know, summer I tend to do a lot more with the fam. And it, it's a good time, right? Because it's, you know, it's a little bit slower. But I did go on a haul yesterday. And I've got it right here in front of me. Actually, my camera's sitting on the rack. And I'm probably going to do a haul video because there's some epic stuff in there. I some th I learned some new stuff, and I want to share it. So um, I can pull out one piece if you want me to. I'll pull yeah, out go one ahead. piece real quick. Um, oh, I hope I don't knock my camera off. <laughs> okay. Like this so. is Yvonne's feet. That's her camera fell. <laughs> on the floor. Um, okay, so this. Oh, my gosh. I had no clue. Um, I thought maybe it was a wild fox. Am I doing it right? Yeah. It's very soft. It's just a sweatshirt type, but it's really soft. But let me get the name. Okay. ATF? Yes. That's, the, oh my gosh. This is even better than wild fox. That stands for all things fabulous. Brand new, depending on where you got this at. This was probably two hundred dollars. Oh my god! So even resale value on it should be about forty or fifty. I'm hoping this is kind of a more rare print too. So that's a little preview of some of the really cool items that I found yesterday. You know why I went to the Salvation Army too? Some of it's Salvation Army, and I don't know why, but Salvation Army, I don't know why their donation their donators are different, but they seem to get more off the wall oddball things and like older people's closets with some like you know vintage items in it in my opinion so how are you doing comps on it because when i type all things fabulous it doesn't bring up very it brings up one thing and then if i type in atf then it brings up like the some federal bureau of alcohol tobacco firearms <laughs> yeah, there's not a whole lot of it on there, but when you look at solds, it's really the comps are really good. It's really promising. Wild Fox usually goes for thirty to forty, like one of their, you know, young person's iconic sweatshirts. This should do a little better. So that's a little preview, and I've got some military stuff and some um, vintage Hawaiian shirts. So I'm pretty excited. That's awesome. I sold a Hawaiian shirt that I picked up. I don't know when. It must. Whoa! Don't press that button. I almost pressed the stop broadcast button. Oh my oh, goodness! We just got I, was, here. I was trying to press stop presenting because I was presenting your shirt to everyone. Um, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I sold a Hawaiian shirt that I had bought. I, I had, it must have been a lifetime ago, and um, it went back to Hawaii. So, and the person was like super that. happy with it. Oh, you saw that? <laughs> I, I check all my girls. I check everybody's sales, you know, make sure everybody's doing well. <laughs> and plus to see what the heck you're selling. Cause you, especially you and Tanya, Robin does clothes and April does clothes, but you two is where I learn more about like hard goods and some off the wall items. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a long list of people that I, I'm sorry. I check your stores every other night <laughs> and see you know, what I can learn. That's awesome though. That's just do, being like doing your due do, due diligence and like because yeah, I trust you guys and I know about what you're paying. I know about where you're getting things and I can hit you up and ask you more information if right if I need to. Yeah. It's so, all about sorry. networking. Yeah. What about you, Tanya? Did you pick up any goodies? I know you here, went garage selling, right? Yeah, I got a couple things to show. I picked up uh, these toms here. Here's the back. 
here's the front. They're only like a dollar. Oh, that's that's like, yeah, I think I could get like 20 to 25 at least. I just sold a pair of wedges like that, um, but they were closed. Uh, they were the peak <laughs> toe ones, not oh, the yeah. little sandals. Yeah, and I've sold them before. They're good. Yeah. Yeah, they do sell. They don't sell for a lot of money, but they will get 20 bucks plus Yeah. Shipping. And then I just got this this morning. It's a uh, rain spooner Hawaiian shirt, but it's, um, what does it say? It says the Red Raiders. What's that going? Red Raiders. Rain. I haven't even looked it up yet. No. Is it Texas, Texas Tech? Can you see it? What yeah. size is it? Uh, let's see. It is a size extra large. That should go for a decent amount of money, like 30, 40 bucks. Yeah, I'm going to try and get it listed today. <laughs> but it's a good time for it, though, because football season is coming up. Yeah. Yes. So they have some listed right now. Um, Here's a tag. Yeah, I would, I, that you should get a very decent amount of money for that. What'd you pay for it? Well, you know what? I was going to mention it. The prices at Goodwill here have gone down again. So they're only it's only five ninety nine now plus tax, but it was for a little while like six forty nine. So they've dropped the prices back to the original, you know, by fifty cents. This and that shack says it should go for fifty to seventy five. I like the way you think this and that shack. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's your motto, Tanya? You can't make a lot of money unless you ask for a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went. I'm sorry. Just calm down when I say this. Okay. I went garage sailing. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I went and stopped at some garage sales the weekend before last. And actually, Saturday, I almost went again. Like, something is up with me in this little town that what? I moved to. Because I, I seriously thought on Saturday, I was like, you know, it's like 8.30. I should go see what's around. And then I'm like, no, I don't need things. I don't need anything. But I did go garage selling and I bought this. I paid $5 for it. It's a Breville pizza stone. Nice. It cooks pizzas on a stone. And it's called the Breville Crispy, the Breville Crispy Crust. I wasn't expecting it to be as expensive as it is. Um, and the lady knew it was expensive, but she was selling it for a friend of hers. And she's like, it's only been used twice. And I told her, I said, you know, I used to have something called a pizza pizzazz. Similar concept, but it wasn't a little stone and it would rotate. And I was like, yeah, I used to put burritos in there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because it would make them crispy like the oven, you know, not like the microwave. But right. uh, like I put them in the microwave to get them thawed out and then yeah. I stick them in the pizza thing. But check these prices out, you guys. Let me sh share with you. Look at them. They're like a hundred bucks. Oh, oh, wow. Used. The new ones are 200 250 And the used ones are like a hundred dollars. I was shocked. So I straight up got me my little. Uh, What'd you pay for it? Five bucks. Oh, nice. Yeah, five dollar. I tried to buy some vans. Um, they were Mickey and Goofy, and they were a men's size twelve. They were these. Oh, those are cute. And the lady wanted ten dollars for them, which honestly, if I was at the thrift store and somebody and they were like nine ninety nine, I would have totally have bought them. However. <laughs> Since I was at a garage sale and I was like, I had went to my car to look them up and I was like, and I came back and I was like, well, would you take $5 for them? And she was like, no, I really want 10. And my head went, well, there's a difference between want and get. And then I went and got in my car. And I was just like, I could have bought those. I don't know why I didn't. That's so funny that you bring this up because I feel the same way. Like. If I'm at a garage sale, I, I want to pay less for it. But if, um, like, say it's $5 at a garage sale and I feel like I should pay a dollar for it. 
But if I saw that same thing at Goodwill for $5, I would totally buy it. I know. <laughs> but it's like our thinking between the garage sales and the thrift stores. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought about it when I left and I was like, I should have just bought those shoes. But there was just something about her that triggered me. <laughs> where she was just like, no, I really want $10. And I was just like, I want a lot of things, you know? <laughs> so, because I'm thinking like my, con my thought process was like, okay, right. this is a small town and you're at a garage sale on a non-busy street with size 12 men's shoes with Mickey Mouse on them. How many people are going to come by <laughs> and be like, those are the ones, you know, like, I, I should have just bought them though. I was just being a hard butt. So did you actually get out two weekends in a row? No, I didn't go Saturday because I was okay. like, I don't need to shop. I have an entire storage unit of things that I can list. So no, I, I didn't go buy things because it just was bad. And that, and I needed, I, I just didn't need to spend money. I've been trying to be much more frugal um, with my money. And um, because I just, I got tapped out. You know, when they say like, oh, you have three months before you go into like financial, like disaster. Right. I'm in month three of three. As far as, you know, I mean, June, I took off the end of May. I, I wasn't really doing much in May, June. We were getting ready for the rally. I was off. My store was even off July. My store was off. We were moving. We just moved in the first week of August. I mean, I'm in the third month and my pockets are thin, thin, thin. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just, I don't need, I need to be selling. I don't need to be buying things. That's for sure. So let's go ahead and show what we sold. Let's show the money coming in. What did you, uh -oh. I know you might leave soon. So let's do you first. What, what do you got? Oh, um, you know, I seriously, you know, I haven't been working. I haven't been working too much at it. Um, maybe I list 20 things a week lately, you know, for the last month. Lots that is of family time much more than hiking. I've been doing at all. So I've had, you know, luckily I've still had a couple of sales per day. Typically, I don't know how. I love you, eBay. My goodness. Um, yeah, I nothing said epic at all. Just bread and butter stuff. A few things in the thirty to forty dollar range. Typical stuff. Harley Davidson. Some anthro stuff. Oh, sorry. No, I'm <laughs> looking better looking, next week. I'm looking at your store. I'm trying. I'm looking. I'm yeah, there's not much there, right? No, no. I was looking at your completeds. You see anything interesting? <laughs> well, all of your stuff is actually, let me just share, because your store is actually interesting in general, <laughs> regardless of however much it's being sold for. Oh, well, your thank you. Items, your items just aren't cookie cutter, you know? I, I try not to. I'm trying to get away from the, anything from, like, I mean, the $20 range. I want to get back. Your store. I mean, look at this. Like, these are not cookie cutter pieces. This is not... These are all really interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I agree. Great. The Ralph Lauren, that was $52 because it was blue label. That wasn't the bad. Khakis? Yeah. Okay, let's look at them. So what made these special is because the label was blue? The label. I thought that the labels were always blue. No, and not polo. Um, no, they're black. They're purple, black, and I can't remember which one the hierarchy is, and then blue, and then, like, Ralph Lauren lauren by ralph lauren ralph lauren sport it's pretty these expensive. look like an ironing nightmare um i yeah i have a steamer thank goodness but yeah those went to somebody that runs an amish store in pennsylvania they're really interesting looking look at them i kind of yeah. wanted them. they're pretty epic and really you know being ralph lauren blue label they were the best fabric not that cheap oh my gosh so soft for khakis look at you and your color wheel isn't that fancy yeah. yeah i use that i think i talked about that when we did a tips and tricks and tools video yeah, i remember that is such that is so helpful just go that to an art store or you can get, they're on ebay i found mine at the thrift store but they're on ebay because i've looked it up for other people you know what i need to write that down right now because i think that's a fabulous idea yeah it is it's didn't it's i know so 
because you know the color. I mean, it's not. It's still not going to solve every color computer monitor. You know, um, what do you, whatever problem, but it helps give people kind of an idea. Like, oh, okay, this isn't really red, red. I don't know. Yeah, that's a great idea. So you got no. it at the art store. It's an art. It's a color palette, but you they're on eBay. Pretty cheap, under ten dollars. That's yeah. I remember you talking about that, and I, I I didn't like put it in my brain bank anywhere. But that's really smart. Hey, I did get a new background too. You know, my last background was a beach, and that doesn't really go with Colorado and Denver, the Mile High scene, which is my store, my branding. So I cut. I would cut two of them in half, and I you know I'd tape them together <laughs> to try to make it a sky. But it was kind of it looked pretty arts and crafty. Okay. So I finally found a full cloud one that I like. I didn't know what a picky, you know what I am, but apparently I am. It took forever <laughs> to find one that was right. So this is a little softer too. And I think with my new mannequin, I think it looks good. I think. I'm not switching to white yet. I don't care what anybody says about eBay open. I'm not doing it. I really that liked my background. I had a hard time when people, this was years ago this wasn't even recent when they're like oh well, you need to have white do you remember the whole conversation when some then article was released saying if items were on red backgrounds then auction people were more inclined to bid and if it was on a blue background then it was this do you remember that it was mm -hmm. probably four years ago the big you are doing red <laughs> yeah blue and red background debate and all of these listings came up with blue or red yeah i've seen your blue ones not the red ones though well i had teal mine was teal mine was like this color it was yeah, like yeah yeah i never like I, I actually i did have a blue at one point it was like a dark like a dark almost royal blue but a little darker i'm sure Tom, yvonne has it on her color wheel <laughs> <laughs> um what about you miss tanya what you got okay i'm gonna attempt to screen share y'all <laughs> okay hang on i sold some media let me present you so that way it'll stay on you now how will i know which screen to choose put it on that screen first and then press the share button and it'll pop up on your active window section so I'm gonna to touch my Google Hangout window because that's where all my other stuff is. Okay, start screen share. Okay, oh, why is it doing that? Is that good? Yep. Okay, so this uh, Fable Haven Grip of the Shadow, Grip of the Shadow Plague uh, by Brandon Mole. I think I paid about $3 for this and it sold for $50.99. And I'm running a sale right now on a lot of stuff in my store, 15% off. And then I sold this one Sunday. I'd never even heard of this uh, band, but it's a music CD and it sold for $24.99. And I believe I paid $3 for this one too. And then if you guys don't know about Dr. Demento, always be looking for his stuff. Uh, I know that's a bad picture, but I, I've had this one for a while though. I think I maybe paid $1.99 for it and it sold for $39.99. Is that the way they always look like their bootleg? No, this one actually does look like it's a bootleg, but okay. um, not, not all of them do. Okay, so they don't all look like they're bootleg. Let me look them up. Yeah. I've never, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, I don't really know a whole lot about it either, except that they bring good money. And one time when I was out thrifting, I don't know, about a year or so ago, this was my last one to sell. I um, picked all of them up. I look at the solds here. No, oh, how do I stop screen sharing? You pre you just there's a stop sharing button. You always tell me that, but I never see it. Just uh, press that. <laughs> see if that stops. Okay. We're going into the abyss. <laughs> oh my god, what is happening? We're gonna die. Okay. There, there. Thank goodness. <laughs> so. You know, I'm looking at some of these CDs, and they all kind of look pretty simple, except for some of them. 
Yours is really high on the sales price, though. I sorted them high to low. That's because you got to ask a lot of money. <laughs> Girl, you and your money, I swear. <laughs> you can just ask for anything. Okay, so I had sales, which is surprising. Because I just turned my store back on at the end of July, like July 25th. And then I ran some auctions. I, was, I ran auctions on all my shoes and clothing. All 32 of them. <laughs> and uh, and uh, ran auctions. And then I have actually sold things. So let me share with you what I sold. Which I'm really surprised. Because I haven't listed. I think I haven't listed since before May. It's been a long time. Uh, here's the Dr. Demento stuff I was looking at. Like they're all like not like these are some money, but then you go down and they're all just go to like twenty bucks. Yeah, I should go buy though that lot. I just saw a lot of them. I should go buy it and sell yeah, them. Just separate. Get them. Yeah, I might. <laughs> um, so if you remember, I did a haul video about these. I bought four of these countertop water filtration systems. They were in the box like this. They came from. I know they were an Amazon pull from an Amazon seller. Um, this was back right after the uh, final value fees were going to go into effect. The final value fees. Uh, storage fees were going to go in February, I believe. And so a lot of things at Savers had uh, Amazon stickers on them, and there was multiples of them. So I bought four of these filtration systems. I've sold all of them. I just sold my last one the other day for $34.95 plus shipping. I had somebody offer me like $10, I think, and then $15, and they were just offering me these kind of low offers. And I was like, no, because I already knew I had sold three of them. You know, I'll just wait and somebody's gonna want one. And uh, I sold it. So I actually need to ship it out. It just sold, I think, Sunday. Well, um, and I paid $4.99 for them minus 30% because I had a coupon. Then, I have had this little backpack <laughs> forever. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Um, it's, a, it's a German, I believe, or Dutch. I'm not really sure. It's made in Germany. Okay, so it's German. It's Scout, uh, Joy the Horse, I guess. And it's got all of these horses on there that look like they're flying, but they don't have wings. And that picture's upside down. No, it's not. And then, um, yeah, so it's just this little backpack, and it's it's almost like a book bag because inside of it is plastic. I think I have a picture of it. Yeah. This is all hard inside. It's got, so, like, you wouldn't puncture through your stuff, and it's not going to poke you in the back. But I've had it listed really high for a long time, and I just never was willing to drop the price on it because I knew it was special, but it was just going to have to wait, you know? And it, I waited it out. I think I've had it at least three years. And it sold It sold on Sunday for full Yay. asking price, $59.94 plus shipping. And then you guys saw me talk about these silly little cups. I paid mm -hmm. $0.99 cents minus 30%, so like $0.79 cents for them uh, a piece. So, you know, 4 bucks and mm -hmm. some change. And they sold last week on a best offer for $20 plus shipping. So I got like 31 bucks for them. Um, for these Coke glasses, these plastic, plastic uh, Royal Caribbean Coke glasses. And um, yeah, so I wasn't sure those were gonna sell and I had saw people whenever I talked about them, they're like, I see those all the time. All the time. Yeah, and they sold. And I think $20 plus shipping for something I paid four bucks for is not bad. I mean, it's not like, yeah. And I didn't yeah, have them very long. Like, I see those all the time. Who knew? Yeah. <laughs> and then I just wanted to talk about this one just because it's so, like, it's just like a no-name Christmas bear. Hello? This is a Walmart bear from Walmart, just regular yeah. size. But it's it came out of a plush bag that I had, and I went ahead and listed it because you just never know because people get these things as gifts. Mm -hmm. And they have sentimental value to them. They're right. like, my, my meatball gave that to me, you know, whatever. This one didn't even have a tush tag. Um, <laughs> tush tags are the little care tags on the bottom that tell you the brand and all that. But I think it's a Walmart. 
But yeah, just a plain Christmas bear. It sold for thirteen forty four plus shipping. So, and I, my cost on it, I think, was a quarter. Yeah, so that's, that's good. Yeah. So you never know with those little plushies. I mean, people people lose them and people want them. Uh. So I don't know. That's got all I got. In the chat, Tracy uh, says. Yvonne and ladies, do any of you personally think it matters the color of the mannequin? I guess that's more a question for Yvonne. I don't think so, just because I've seen people use those mannequins that are all like um, the, the fabric ones. Yeah, mine are, none of my mannequins are white. They're all, like one of them's gray. Uh, yeah, and Caucasian, Delilah. <laughs> what about yours, Yvonne? I know you recently got oh. a white one, right? Yeah, I kind of answered it already in the chat, but um, for those of watching later. Okay, so I think what why we're all buzzing about this, of course, is because of eBay Open 2017. So there's a lot of buzz about eBay kind of recommending for clothing sellers to please put your stuff on a mannequin. So they didn't fully reveal what their agenda is in helping us. Um, but they kind of like the word kind of is they would like us to be like white backgrounds and mannequins, but, but yet there's really no proof that that is going to help you, um, increase sales yet. Now is eBay going to change some kind of algorithm in Cassini to where then it is going to be a big issue. Wouldn't you think that it's going to, I'm, I'm going to tell you why I think it is because they're doing picture search oh yeah the new picture search. and it's okay. super hard to picture search when you have a beach background or you know something yeah, it's easier that. to search when it's on a mannequin because it's more uniform in kind of the way that it looks yeah possibly mm -hmm. but i know the background thing is because they're doing the picture search I remember that. And so because I'm being really stubborn about my background and my branding, what I told myself on this issue was unless that is really, really becomes super important and eBay says, do it, do it. I'm going to stick with this, but I am very careful to try to have a nice line of demarcation, you know, like, okay, this is a shirt, this is a dress, right? Things like that. So that's I mean, the, that's where I'm stopping at this point. I know that I use picture search quite a bit on Amazon, you know, cause they have flow, which is the, their picture search thing. And even when, um, even when Tanya and Kurt were here and we couldn't identify that gorilla looking guy, right. I opened up my Amazon app. It was a toy. It was not in its packaging. It was just sitting on the shelf. And I opened up my Amazon app and went to the photo search and just did a photo search of it. And it brought it up. Oh, wow. I mean, that's how we figured out what that thing was, Tanya. Yeah. So um, I think it's I think it's important, but it's you know I think it's going to be really hard for eBay. I know that they've been trying to work on it because they have that messaging service that you can send them a picture of your item, and it's like a robot does like a search and it brings you back these results. And it's not super good because I was playing around with it. I was actually at the bar. I was at the restaurant drinking margaritas. When I learned about it, so I started taking pictures of like my margarita glass <laughs> and sending it through this chat service. And, and I think it's the same concept, though. I think they're using the same kind of technology on the photo searching. Right. Um, we have another question. Uh, do you do 60 day returns? I meant 30. Nope, not unless they make me. I'm sorry. I don't want to talk bad about eBay, but not unless they make me on this one. Yeah, right. I don't. Yeah, I don't really. I don't think having a 60 day return policy really matters. Right. Honestly, I don't know why you would even push that issue, because 30 days has been typical for so long, for any store. You know, it's it, like you either come across those stores where like you have 30 days to return or they're like Kohl's where they're like, you can bring them back forever, you know, um, that I don't see the point in offering the 60 day return unless they're just trying to be different. Yeah, because Macy's stuff is brand new with the tags. If you buy some clothing from my store, you could wear it for 50 days and decide you're, you, you know, you're tired of it. You want to buy something different with that money and return it. 
and I'd have to give your money back. And I wouldn't know if you wore it for that long, you know, that long in any way. So I don't agree with it. I have issues with it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, re I'm not really concerned about people like using this stuff and then being like, okay, I don't want it now. Um, but I just, I don't think it's necessary. Like, I just I, don't see the, I don't see the point. I don't see the know? point either. 14 days is plenty enough time for you to figure out if you like something or not. I mean, you I know? have 30 days. I've had 30 days for a long time. And I even used to do free shipping back. I did, I had free seller paid shipping on returns because they were doing those INADs. That was whenever the item not as described was such a huge deal, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that was a horrible period. Oh, that was awful. That was a really dark days of yes. eBay. <laughs> dark days of eBay. I mean, the minute that they came out with that, I was like, I'm doing seller paid returns because I don't want fake INETs. It's worth it to me to just pay for them to return it. And you know, my I had so many people say, your business is going to go under. The scammers are going to kill your business. I didn't have any more returns than I normally did. It didn't change anything about my business. Um... So, I, you know, I, I would do it again. I really don't, you know, it doesn't bother me to do that. It hasn't bothered me, but I can understand in the, in the clothing area where it would, those, yeah. this type of fit would kill you because that's a season. That's pretty much a season. That's like rent clothing. If I did, yeah. if they do make me do it, then I'm going to want to do a restocking fee or, and do those little tags, the little, yes. I always said if I sold a lot of clothes and that was my business, I would have those tags and say, right. eBay, too. Does have, eBay does have a policy that says the returns need to be returned in the condition that they were received. And mm -hmm. so, you know, just because they say, well, I don't want it doesn't mean that they get to return it and it's been worn for, you know, six weeks or whatever. So I, I would right. do those tags. I definitely would. I it's actually, a real delicate area. Oh, sorry, Deb. No, no, I, I, I'm talking too much. It's a delicate yeah. area because you also don't want to, um, okay, if someone does get something and they just didn't like it and they're like really conservative and tight on money, you also don't want to encourage people damaging your item on purpose just so they can, you know, have you pay shipping and get refunded shipping. It's yeah. kind of a delicate balance to figure out how to handle. Yeah, that's true. I think the thing is, is if somebody's in that data, in that state of mind, they're going to return it however way they can. They're going to figure it out. <laughs> they're, I mean, they'll file an unauthorized claim with PayPal. They'll, you know, they'll just do whatever they can if that's the way that it is. And I, and honestly, I can tell you that running a scared business is the worst kind of business to run. Yeah. That's no fun. Don't that's run fun. a scared business. Just It just goes as it's going to go and it's going to be fine and you're not going to have a thousand people scamming you and it'll be okay. But I, I would, there's no harm in putting tags, get a tag gun, get some little thing. I had even, when I had thought about doing clothes, I had got, I had found in the crafting section of the thrift store, these little paper tags and they were adorable. They were in really cute print and they had like little sayings on them, you know, like, you know, just almost like motivational sayings or just like little sayings, you know, almost like a fortune cookie. And they were hard on like on really thick cardstock little cards. And I was like, oh, I'm totally going to put those on clothing that I sell, you know, and that, that tag needs to still be there if you're going to return it. I'm going to get somebody at Etsy to make me some tags. <laughs> <laughs> I can make you tags. I have my Cricut. Oh, yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah. I, can make I need to get one of those. I'm going to go look at the chat. I haven't looked at the chat in a while. Well, I just can't make up my mind about 60 days. If it looks like people are really getting a boost, then I may switch over too. I mean, I'm not that hard headed, but. I feel like that's reseller discrimination, <laughs> right? Oh, Why are you I'm sorry, Tanya. It's hard to. No, I really way. wasn't going anywhere with that. I was just saying. You know, but I mean, it's eBay. What are you going to do? There's, it's there. Mr. One Dollar Business, or my dollar, I said Mr. I'm sorry. It's a lady. Um, my One Dollar Business said, um, do you think that they changed the algorithm for people who have 60 days? That's what I want to know. Because then I'll do it too. I'm sure that they <laughs> do. 
I mean, I'm sure that they do. It's just like how they supposedly change the algorithm for people that have free shipping, which I have started doing more free shipping lately just because it makes things easier for people. And I know as a customer, I kind of do the same thing. When I'm looking to buy stuff and I'm like, oh, I don't want to pay shipping on it. You know, even though I know it's in the price, there's just something mental about it. And you're just like, I don't want to pay shipping. I don't want to see that extra thing on there, even though I know it's the same. So I've started changing over to free shipping. Uh, and it also is really helpful if you don't typically do free shipping. Uh, it's really helpful to do it during fourth quarter. It definitely does help with holiday stuff when people are doing their gift buying. I mean, if you know, you know what your budget is and you know what you're adding to your card, click, 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 you know, and not have to worry about, oh, now I have $60 in shipping because mm -hmm. I bought eight different gifts for my family, you know. That's a good point. That's a good point. Depends on what you're selling. You know, a lot of these rules that we talk about and try to figure out, we have to remember some of them, they're like more geared toward like the big box stores and high competition items rather than like well, me personally, that I'm selling secondhand clothing, you know, one-offs. So, oh, and one more thing. When we talk about 60 days, there's two elements to that 60 day returns. I'm not too opposed to the 60 days in, in general. What I know I don't want to do is the 60 days, is it free where I guarantee, where I'll yeah, pay shipping really and no matter what? That is a... Oh really hard business for people that do clothing that is whether in that mid-range clothing you know and mm -hmm. um you know a lot like bins like bin shoppers where you know they're not paying that much for it so they're willing to take lower prices and they're selling a lot of stuff for 12.95 free shipping that can really eat into your profits if you've got even you know five or ten returns that you're paying all that shipping on I'm not adverse to the 60 day returns. I'm not, I just don't see the point. I don't understand why eBay's pushing that. That's, that's my thing. I don't, I don't see the reason why the standard is 30 days. So why, why change it? I mean, even, even Amazon 60, I mean, 30 days. Oh, well, that is weird then. Yeah. Uh, do you guys wait in line at the post office for a receipt? No, I don't. I don't even wait whenever they ask me if I want a receipt. I'm like, no, thank you. And I leave. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't wait either. I just put them in that little turn bin. and. I think I, I really stopped worrying about that. Um, you know, when they changed the top rated seller discount and they changed the way that they were doing things, I, in, I immediately changed over to two-day handling. It doesn't mean that I always wait two days. It just means, like, there's that little buffer and it stops me from getting knocked out of top rated seller. It does knock you out of top rated seller plus, which means you don't get your 10% discount as it is now, but you don't get, you don't lose your badge, you know, as long as you have it within your handling time. And so changing it over to two days really helped with those late scans, you know, because sometimes they just don't scan them until they get to the distribution center and that's not your fault. Yeah. yeah, which is why I personally wait and get my receipt because I want to see them scanned <laughs> in. But yeah. let me add this though: I don't go to the regular post office. Um, I think I've said this before, and there's a little video on it too. I go to a copy it store that has a postal annex in it, and yeah. there's hardly ever any lines. They know when are they going to put our machines that we can scan our own stuff? I was just talking to them about that kiosk. How that should already have happened. How hard is that? Boop, de boop, de hey, <laughs> that should be so simple. I don't know how they're gonna do that though to curb people sending like saying that they sent something, it's scanned in, but it's not there. You know what oh, I mean? Why they have to try, oh, like they do at the grocery store where if you don't set your item in that bag, that lady starts hollering at you, that computer yeah. lady starts going, <laughs> put the item in the bag. <laughs> right. An unexpected item is in your bag. <laughs> Man, you I had to check out. Face, we caught you. 
I had all of this stuff I was checking out with because all of the lines were really full and there was nobody at the self checkout. So I was like, well, I'm just going to not take up a space in line. I'll go over here where there's nobody at. And then all of a sudden, like, everybody decided they want to go to self checkout. And all of like, like 10 of my items apparently had the wrong weights in the system because as soon as I would scan them and I put them on the little scale thing, it would tell me that there was an unexpected item in the bagging area. And I'm like, dude, I just scanned it. So I would, li I would literally have 10 things stacked up next to the scale that was just there. And I'm like, I already scanned those, I promise. You know, and I'm just stuff stacked up in front of the bagging area because it wouldn't let me. I gave up. What else do we normally talk about? We do buys, we do sells. What else? Anybody got any goals this week? Goals? Goals. <laughs> you know those things. <laughs> what about you, Yvonne? You got any goals this week? Um, okay, well, let's see. Um, I'm going to do this haul video because I'm really excited. Now, Steve is right now at the dentist. I dropped him off. He is having implants. Oh, my gosh. So um cover your ears guys but you women you know how men can sometimes be when they get sick or have stuff like this so i'm anticipating a little bit of extra caretaking this week <laughs> so i'm not going to make a lot to a lot of plans outside of the house i'll just right. stay close tinker around in my ebay which will be good for me because i need to get to listing right it's time yeah as a matter of fact you guys i i need to boogie right now i gotta get up there and pick him up. Okay. Yep. So I'll see you guys later. Bye everyone in the chat. Bye everyone. Talk to you guys later. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Did you notice Yvonne's awesome shirt? Yes. Yeah, it's the first thing I last time. time. I just noticed it was an MTV shirt. MTV. I know. I saw, um, Q already tried to buy it from me. That's a great not, shirt. Not for sale. I already cut it up. Make it girly. It looks I awesome. love this. Where'd it's you like buy it? Bucks. The thrift store, $3. It looks wow. great. How cool is this? I'm sure it's probably like 150 bucks at like Urban Outfitters. Yes. <laughs> but um, I have goals this week. I've been trying really hard to put things on my calendar. I'm going to put things on my calendar as um, must, things that I must do. Right. And I don't have them on a particular day. Um, but I know that that has to be done like this week. Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So that's what I've been doing. Um, and from those things that need to be done, I'm, I've been trying to break them down into smaller, smaller tasks. Um, and then I've been today, I'm going to be doing my listing for the haul stuff that I did yesterday. Mm -hmm. Cause I started that new video series yeah, called, um, what's it called? What's being listed? Yeah, what you're listing. Yeah, what's being listed. Um, I thought that would be better than doing haul videos because when I do haul videos, I always do research because mm -hmm. I like to show people like why I bought the item. You know, this is what it was selling for. This is what I saw. This is why I picked it up. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm doing the exact same thing, only with items, you know, it could be new items. It could be things that I already had. Um, since it's been a while since I've really done any videos, I just decided to do that. And it's kind of a twofer. Because then um, I was just saving them as drafts when I found, like, the one that I wanted to list. And I was just putting in the price. Like, oh, well, this is fifty nine ninety five. So now today all I have to do is take pictures and then do my descriptions and I'm done. Yeah. I agree. I do that, too. Like, whenever I'm in the store and if I'm looking something up, I just go ahead and, and hit sell one, sell one like this if I know I'm going to buy it. And put in the price, too, because I'll forget the price. So... I don't mm -hmm. want to go back and do the research again looking for the price. Yeah, because, you know, I'm, I'm basically doing my research like three times because I do it when I'm in the store. Yes. And then I was doing it in haul videos. Mm -hmm. And then I was doing it again when I was actually listing the item. And that's just yeah. a waste of time. Yeah, so, that's crazy. So I just, yeah, I decided to do the what's being listed videos. And so I'd like to do those two or three times a week. So to do that, yeah. I actually have to list the stuff. Yeah. So... Yeah, but then that's going to lead to sales update videos. <laughs> that's right. Gosh, I need to do one of those. I haven't done one in forever. Yeah, I'm going to do one for the last um, 30 days. 
since it was, you know, not very much stuff, you know, it was only $600 worth of things, which is actually really phenomenal for what I had in my store. I, mean, I have 200 items and they're all super old and janky. So janky? I like that word janky. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so um, the fact that I even sold that much, I, I think is amazing because there's just really not that much in there. Um, yeah. Are you running a sale or anything? No, I'm not running a sale right now. I'm not. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to probably go through and rearrange some things. And um, I have like 66 items that eBay says are underperforming. 66? Yeah. So I need to go take a look at those. And I have some items that eBay's telling me have been listed for six for what over 16 months or something yeah I have some of those too yeah so and I did go in and revise them because it says you know revise this item so I went in and revised it but it didn't like take off the little alert at all hmm. don't know why yeah it seems like it would take it off yeah so I don't know because I went in and moved some stuff around does anybody have any questions before we leave yeah you have one here from uh, Valerie she said, <laughs> not trying to get personal, Deb, but do you still use Patrick? Then if you are able to, can you say how you found him? I've actually considered a virtual lister, but feeling unsure about it. Um, no, Patrick actually was someone that I knew from high school. We ended up reconnecting on Facebook, but we weren't like hanging out or anything. Um, and then just kind of coincidentally, we started talking one day about life. And then I was like, hey, I need somebody to help me do eBay. So he would um, come and help me. Um, he would do photos. He would do um, cleaning. He would enter the stuff into the inventory. He was, he was just doing all kinds of different things. He didn't actually do listing. I had just started training him on how to do drafts. Um, and then I ended up sending him to San Francisco to live his dream. <laughs> and Like I literally bought him an airline ticket and was like, just go. Oh, and he was gone for a while and then he came back, but then he needed more of a full time job. So he actually got a full time job somewhere else, which is really sad because he's hard to replace. Um, I did have a friend of mine that I was having. Um, he's an eBay seller and uh, but he just doesn't have a lot of sourcing opportunities in his area. So I was having him do uh, drafts and listings for me where basically I was just going in and putting the kind of general title of the item, like, you know, what it was. Like, this is Remington, blah, 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 blah. And then he was actually going, and I was putting the condition, and he was actually going in and doing all the additional keywords, the description, and, like, pricing research. Yep. And that was working okay. I just, at that particular time, I, uh, I just got, I got too busy and I wasn't even doing listing. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think I owe him money. Because <laughs> I was paying him like a dollar a listing. Yeah. So, and it was working out really well. I think it's something that if you find somebody that you trust, um, you can find people that just don't have good sourcing availability. They're eBayers. Mm -hmm. They know all about eBay, but they just don't have a lot going on in their area to really be able to do it. Right. Um, but I was paying Patrick $10 an hour, um, but, and he was actually in house. And then I was paying a dollar a listing um, when I was doing like virtual, virtual lister. Yeah. Q asked a question. He says, uh, what is a good site to check retired James Avery pieces? And Q, you can message me if you want, but if you're, if you're trying to research a piece that you can't find, I would definitely go high on that piece. And I would search, um, I would search eBay and definitely search uh, the solds, highest to lowest, and also check out WorthPoint too. Um, Pixland Place is asking, how do you decide between buy it now or auction? I hardly ever run auctions. I only run auctions if I don't know what the value of something is, and so I'll start it really high. Wait. <laughs> and then, I do the and same then, thing. <laughs> and then wait. Um, and then the only time I really do auctions is when I'm trying to liquidate. You know, when I'm just like, okay, here's my bottom line. All this stuff is $19.99, you know, or $9.99. That's what I did with the clothes and shoes. 
I, mm-hmm. I ran the clothes at nine ninety five starting bid, and I ran the shoes at nineteen ninety five starting bid, and just ran them on auction. And they actually did pretty good. I sold out of thirty two. I think I sold twelve. Yeah, I used to do that a long time ago, but then I mean I would sell a lot, like you said. But then I'd also have a lot. I'd have to go in and relist, and that was such a pain to remember what I was originally asking for it after I ran the sale. <laughs> So, but now I just run sales in the store. So, yeah. Um, we had another question about: Do you um, do you? Most people have a store, or are they just listing? I have a store because I want to be able to run sales and I want to be able to offer promotions. And yeah. there's a lot of other features to it of having a store than just like, oh, you get these quote unquote free listings that you're paying for. Um, there's other things to it than than those listings. Right. There's a lot more features. I think that's it. Is that all the questions? I think so. All right. Well, I guess that's it for the day. I'm so glad that we're back. And I'm we're so back. Glad. <laughs> we're back. I'm so glad life is getting more normal for me and everybody else, too, that was going through kids during the summer. Yes. So... All right. Do you have anything you'd like to talk about before we close out for the day? I cannot think of anything right now. (laughs) Okay, then. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us and always supporting us. You guys are so fabulous for coming out and spending your hour with us on Tuesdays. Um, We will see you guys next time. Next week. Bye.